Hey, welcome to episode two of Tangible Takeaways. We're talking about honoring your parents. Uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, why it's so important for us to enter into tension in uh, parenting relationships. Yeah, I'm Brian Haney, and I'm gonna talk about, you know, just wrestling with some hard things in scripture. Scripture is hard sometimes, what it says, and understanding it appropriately and then applying that to our everyday life is so important to living out the Christian life, to walking towards God appropriately, not with our own definitions of God, but with his definitions of himself. And so you're gonna hear some of those, those hard things today, but hopefully they'll breathe life into you as you take them away, apply them every day. Let's get into tangible takeaways. Here we are in episode two of Tangible Takeaways. Let me read our passage and then we'll jump into some questions. Our passage comes from Exodus 20, uh, verse 12. It says, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land and the Lord your God, uh, that the Lord your God is giving to you. Um, so Brian, you were talking about this this weekend, yeah. kind of an interesting passage to be talking about. We, I, I don't know that we totally have a concept of what that word honor there means because yeah. honor is just kind of, first of all, we don't live in a culture that honors anyways. Right. It's, yeah, it's different now. Yeah, like that's not a value to us. But then also, you know, you've got to think, man, to the, this Hebrew culture, this ancient Hebrew culture, the word honor is gonna mean something different than what it means yeah. to us today. So there's lots to unpack there. What would you say was the most difficult thing about getting ready for the message? Well, you know, Jackson, it's funny because when you think about the 10 words, it's hard to break them apart. Yeah. It, honestly, it's not. We it's like not to go one, yeah, two, three, four. It's not four. intended to be like, oh, just this piece. Yeah. The whole thing fits together yeah. to be representation of God's will for his people yeah. so that they represent his holiness to the world around them well. Yeah. Uh, they were called to be his holy nation, his people, priests, yeah. right? And you can't- There's a very logical flow Yeah, you can't too. break them up. Yeah. Um, even as we go into the next, you know, the following the following five, the, the, the ones coming, they're like yeah. two two sen like yeah. two words in yeah. a sentence, right? Yeah, reading, so reading those them on the next episodes are gonna be really for, short. Yeah, thou shalt not yeah. kill or yeah. whatever. And it's like, wow. So it's hard because we have to remember that these all fit within a bigger picture. Yeah. Context, and, context, context. Yes, and when you don't do that, you tend to either dismiss or maybe give too much, mm. um, too much assumptions to what they're getting at yeah. or what they're intending. It and makes so, it really easy to cut certain ones out and elevate others absolutely. higher right. instead of saying, okay, these all go in this cohesive chunk yep. and we've got to kind of justify them all together. To see it as a whole. Yeah. Because that's, again, God is trying to represent what wholeness looks like. Yeah to the world that's yeah. broken, right? Yeah, and After even from our New Testament sin. context, if we pick one that we're like, say the Sabbath from two weeks ago, right. that we're like, whatever about the Sabbath, well then, what about are we the just ones? gonna carry that attitude yeah. to all the other ones? Like we can't right. just pick and choose, we've gotta treat it as this right. chunk together. Yeah, and then also seeing in Christ the fullness of all of these yeah. without the rule of all of these, mm. right? So as far as the, the particular, yeah. um, we're still fulfilling every single one of these, I would say, because God's law is perfect and good. Yeah. And, and it's life giving. It's yeah. intended for your good, for your life. Yeah. That's what scripture says. That's what God himself said. Yeah. I'm giving you this because it's good. Yeah. And it will be life giving to you. If yeah. you break them, it will be bad and, and things that happen, yeah. you know, and the consequences yeah. are, are, are the, the result of breaking or the result of sin. Yeah. It's not. Like God's punishment, um, sometimes he does inflict punishment, but most oftentimes he just lets sin run its course. It's just the natural, natural consequences, consequences of yeah. it is, the, is the, the result. Yeah. And so when we think about this one, I mean, one of the most difficult things about talking about this commandment is it came with some very steep, very steep uh, kind of, uh, if you didn't obey this commandment, the penalty was death. Mm which is fascinating. Yeah. I mean, the same for the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> it's fascinating. Yeah. There's because these we weird, think, very oh, okay. loaded consequences right. on the backside of some of right. these. Yeah. And, and putting it into the context of our culture, we have a culture that celebrates the disrespectfulness of parents. Mm. All you have to do is turn on a sitcom, yeah. turn on a Disney channel it's show, It's always the stupid dad, is. right? Right. It's, it, is, it is intentionally disrespectful. Yeah. To Dumb get dad laughs. and helicopter mom. Yes, to yeah. get laughs. And, 
So we've, we've cheapened what it means to honor mm. an authority figure, starting with the parents. Yeah. And then, I mean, look at the rest of the world, yeah. right? Everything in our world, we don't need to honor any authority yeah. except our own. And I thought so, that was an interesting point you brought up this weekend too, that really honoring our parents becomes this foundational kind of trickle to the way that we interact with other authority figures. Because yeah. they're kind of the first authority figure. And yep. so the way that you honor them and interact with them is going to impact, you can't, it's like when you start not honoring your parents, well then that's gonna naturally trickle into all these other authority right. figures in yeah. your life as You're well. You're not, we're not quite as capable of dividing our mind as we think we are. Yeah. Um, we try it. People try it all the time. Kids try it all the time. Depending on the situation you put them in, they're going to act a certain way. Yeah. You know, you've seen that. Um, if you dress your children up, they mm. act differently. Yeah. And where they're at, they act differently than other places. Yeah. And that's so true where we, if we are teaching our kids, if our homes are places of where disrespect is tolerated, mm. then we can expect that to continue out through their life. And it sets them on a trajectory that isn't helpful. It isn't engaging the will of the Lord. It is actually engaging the will of Satan, which is rebellion mm. towards yeah. the will of the Lord. And that is a major thing that we need to recapture as followers of Christ. Yeah. And it's not following a, a rule and it's not living up to some pharisaical tradition of of all of these things you must do. It's a heart attitude that says, you know what, why why do I seek to rebel against what is for mm. my benefit? Mm. What is intended to be helpful to me? Yeah. Our parents love us, by and large. There are bad apples, I get it. Yeah. Very exceptional. I mean, yeah. that's not something we can say, oh, that's normative, so yeah. don't give yourself the pass. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that I think challenging for, for preparing for this, this message was the idea of, how do I apply this to adults mm. who honestly want their kids to say, sit down and listen to this, son. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I need to listen to this just as much, even though my parents are older and I don't live under their home, yeah. you know, under their authority in the home. I still need to understand how this really has implications on my life and my relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And how do you go back and for adults, how do you go back and restore a culture of honor in a relationship that has not had it maybe since you were a teenager, right? right where you've just been like, I'm out, mom and dad, I don't care. And yep. then ever since then, man, how do you build back honor? How do you repent of that and things like that? Yeah. It becomes challenging. It's a challenge and it, it always, just like anything where we are seeking God's restoration, it starts with humility. Yeah. It starts with this recognition that we've done wrong, mm. that we have an opportunity to have someone else make it right. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. Because by nature of, of just our wrong thinking until we allow the Holy Spirit who dwells within us to well up in and out of us in mm -hmm. our thinking, yeah. we can't actually fix it. I yeah. mean, that's the thing. Christianity is not a self-help program. Yeah. It is not a parenting, you know, uh, follow these five steps yeah. and everything will go well yeah. with you. That's not how it works. God is, his grace, his goodness, his holiness is, is even shown in bad circumstances. I mean, and so we have to, with humility, just say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Mm. Not what's the rules I can follow? What's the steps I can take? Yeah, Man, it's different. It's yeah. different for people that are dealing with different situations of brokenness yeah. because everybody's brokenness is a little bit Everybody's unique. got different parents and Absolutely. different situations going on with their parents, yeah. yeah. That's super true. Yeah. And I, I think when we're preparing for a message, there's always these things that kind of like rise to the surface. That's like, yep. ooh, that's interesting. Or yeah. wow, that was really cool to me. Right. Like that was changing the way that I think about this, but then it doesn't end up flowing in kind of the total arc of the message. So there's a lot of things, people don't even know this, that end up getting cut out of messages. Oh, yeah. That you're like, ooh, this was exciting, but I didn't get right. to it. And so much scripture that is just, you know, hard yeah. um, to wrestle with, yeah. hard to understand that the pulpit's what, really not the place yeah, for understand it. understand what it means, like what it's to be applied to now. Because yeah. it's, it's not that it's that hard to understand what it's saying. It's yeah. just sometimes we don't like what it's saying. Yeah. We don't like the harshness of which we think it comes across. Yeah. Because we're not seeing necessarily the whole picture yeah. of what God intended. Yeah. And, and that's, especially within these 10 words, the 10 commandments, he is making sure that the people are trying to attain holiness mm, yeah. because he's representing him to the world. Yeah. That is that is 
so far beyond us sometimes because yeah. we just think holiness as as righteousness um, which means right and good action and then we have this definition of what that is yeah and holiness is is includes righteousness but it's also just completely separated out from yeah with an intended purpose and it's it's fascinating because we're like looking at something and go how is that holy how yeah. could that be holy yeah um so it's a challenge yeah to, yeah. To rifle through the, the scriptures and yeah. say, okay. And put together something that's cohesive and feels like it's yep. compelling to people. Because that's really what you want to do in a message. You want to compel people yep. to change. So what would you say were some things that were like, ooh, this was interesting or exciting, but I didn't get to them in yeah. the message? Well, I alluded to one in, um, in Matthew chapter 15 and then Mark 7 which is Jesus is just challenged to mm. the Pharisees yeah. of caring for their elderly parents. Yeah. He, he challenges them with their tradition. They mm. had a tradition that they could actually claim that um, the, the funds that they had were Corbin. It just means dedicated, mm. dedicated to the Lord. And it was actually intended so that they could sidestep caring for their parents because they could wow. say, oh, this money is dedicated to the Lord, so I can't provide this for my parents. Yeah, it'd be wrong to yes, do this to my parents. Right. Wow. It was, and it was a tradition to sidestep a command of the Lord. Yeah. And Jesus picked that up, this, this idea of, look, you guys, you hold to your traditions and you dishonor, you're disobedient to God's commands. Mm. And he quotes this fifth commandment saying, honor, honor your parents, meaning yeah. care for them. Yeah. Don't sidestep it for yeah. your tradition's sake. You are placing yourself in authority over God. Yeah. And that that was a that's a really one, you know, one that we need to hear yeah. in our culture. Yeah. Um it's a little different now because we have, you know, things that provide for our parents and there's governmental institutions that help care for them, yeah. things like that. But we still have that obligation. Totally. From this commandment and just yeah. from honestly from a a uh, the perspective of God, yeah. who again, like creation is such an important part of the biblical canon because it shows that the one who makes has the authority over what is made. Yeah. And there's well, that real natural yes, step. Yes, it's like a natural step. He's the step. cosmic creator, right. so, and then we get Correct. to whatever and authority. Then, and then children are out of the parents. Mm. They're part of that creative process. Now, it's not. Um, obviously all on their own, the yeah. Lord is still over that, but the two become one and out of them comes a child. Yeah. And there is then authority given to the parents by yeah. nature of that. Yeah. And it's this real progression of what we see when you are creating something, you have authority over it. We've totally divorced ourselves from that idea Yeah. <clears throat> because we we honestly, oftentimes we, we terminate yeah. creation, right? Yeah. Through abortion, through other things. We've cheapened life. Mm. We've cheapened um, what it is and when it begins. And because of that, we've cheapened respect and honor mm. and authority. Yeah. Just by nature. Yeah. Uh, so it's, there's all always challenges. So that was one, you know, Jesus is kind of doubling down on, yeah. hey, do not sidestep caring for and a family. real co common gospel theme as well right, right? where uh, you see religious practices used to avoid God's heart behind something yes, right absolutely. where it's like religion gets in the way hey, of man, no this is what God's heart's been about rules are so much easier yeah. to manipulate yeah than a changed heart yeah and that's why and I people have asked me after messages like oh man that was good but I just I just want some steps to yeah. take give and me I'm a like, rule well you know what if if the Lord wanted the new covenant to be rules, he would have written another rule book, yeah. but he didn't. There's a reason there's so much tension to it. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a heart change behind it because what the law was incapable of doing, yeah. Jesus did yeah. on our behalf. Yeah. So it, yeah, fascinating. Another one is actually out of Deuteronomy chapter 21, and it is, it is a tough passage. Yeah. It's one that we don't like. And I'm just going to read it because yeah. it was one that I was going to dive into, but I didn't think I had enough time to get out of it yeah. in a way that was helpful and understood, yeah. not in a way that was kind of left people going, what in the world Yeah, what are we talking about? So it, it says this, it's talking, it's titled Rebellious Son in the NIV, verse 18 of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 21. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of the town. That was where all the business was taken yeah, care of, yeah, right? yeah. the gate of the town. They shall say to the elders, the son of ours is stubborn 
um, and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men um, of his town are to stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. So this is, this is a law <laughs> that Moses <laughs> is telling the people. Yeah. Recounting this in Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, he's fleshing out all of the things that they were to do. And like, we read something like that and we're just like, my goodness. Yeah. That is, that's harsh. Like that's killing hard. rebellious kids now? What is going yeah. on? And and we, we get hung on that and then we miss that last two sentences, which it says, you must purge the evil from among you. Yeah. Yeah, we always get distracted by the death, right? Yes. There's a lot of that in the Old Testament where it's right. death, but then it's it gives, it literally gives the reason for it the death the right after, but right. we're like, but why did they die, right? Yeah. Like we get stuck on the death. And it's, and again, within the biblical canon, death is a consequence of sin. Yeah. Sin brings death. Yeah. Death is not just a punishment yeah. from God yeah. for sin. It is the it is the system he set up. Yeah. He said, when you disobey me, when you disregard me, when you do not consider me heavy and weighty yeah. and worthy of glory and honor and trust, then the result of that is separation from me and separation from life means death. Yeah. Like that's what it is. And so even though you see people inflicting the death, yeah. it is not it's the consequence of the sin, mm. right? Yeah. And and God is telling them through Moses, you need, there's times when you have to speed that process up. Why? Yeah. Because it's going to bring everybody kind of like a cancer. If this is allowed and this is tolerated and this is given, yeah. then it will continue to swell and grow and then it will overtake you. Yeah. And from all of these commands we see this kind of trickle effect yeah there's this there's a, a hyper severity especially in deuteronomy as moses yes. is like you're not gonna be under me anymore like i'm right. i'm not leading you and so he's like you got to make sure that there's no evil that enters and we've got that with the foreign gods and we even struggle with that with joshua as he's coming through mm -hmm. and they're like killing all these different right. like cities and nations and things like that and we have a really tough time with that but it's, it's all attention. about it's kind of like that perfect illustration where you're standing on a chair and it's like, dude, it is so much easier for somebody to pull you down off right. that chair right. than for you to pull somebody up. Yeah. And so as the people of God, we're going to take serious remaining his people, his set apart people and not allowing this evil to infiltrate because it will pull us down. We will yep. succumb to it. And we see Israel not take it super seriously right. and just a little infiltration, just some, you know, foreign people with foreign gods. And then all of a sudden yep. they get pulled you down start, into that. You start immediately with, with commandment number one I have no other gods yeah and there is <laughs> there is this when they start letting other gods be tolerated when they don't tear down the the idols and tear down the high places that represented these other gods you start to see them just kind of being swallowed up yeah by the evil and the death yeah that the nations surrounding the nations in the land of Canaan yeah. had I mean, gone into some crazy things. We, yeah. don't, we don't talk about much, but I mean, murder and sexual perversion, all kinds of stuff. That Killing was, babies. Yes, yeah. that's what I mean. I mean, this stuff was was Gruesome. horrendous. Yeah. And and God was saying, put an end to it, yeah. to the evil. And even in here, we see with a rebellious son. I mean, yeah. It's like that's hard, but it we think about us though, something. When rebellious kid, when a kid who's not rebellious hangs out with rebellious kids, right. what do they begin to become? Yep. Rebellious. It's easy. Be to, it's yep. easy to succumb to that. Right. And so this is this kind of just purging. Like yep. we got to get that out. Yeah. And 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 always within this, we have to remember we're no longer under the law. So it's not like we we go stone our children. <laughs> Um, please don't, please don't take right. that away from this. But at the same time, we don't just allow our children to get stoned. Yeah. I'm talking about weed or whatever. Like, yeah. meaning this isn't all grace and just never have discipline. Yeah. It's getting at the point that we have to be vigilant. Yeah. Because sin so easily overtakes us. Yeah. It's always crouching and ready. Yeah. And we have to be vigilant at teaching our kids yeah. the heart behind why we don't want to draw towards sin because that draws us into death that's yeah. it we draw towards god because that draws us into life yeah and good 
and and exemplifying that to our children and, and taking that and being an example of that yeah. is really one of the implications of this too. It's like, yeah. this was a last resort. Yeah. I don't even know how many times this happened in the yeah. nation of Israel. Yeah. Like nobody wants to bring their kid yeah. to the gate because yeah. they know what's gonna happen, Yeah. right? Yeah. This is a law kind of showing the severity. It's the emergency yes, break the almost. severity of what? And and he said, look, it will strike fear that, you know, that Israel will hear about it and be afraid. The idea that, look, when I call you to something, you need to pay attention. Yeah. And there's a lot that we're called to in Christ. Yeah. That we yeah. have to pay attention to. Yeah. It's not that we now are, you know, earning righteousness that's going to provide for us salvation. Christ gives us righteousness that provides for us salvation. But if he's given you something, you would think you use it. Now you if live in it. If you're not using it, maybe you've never been given it. Mm. And that's the challenge. That's the tension. And yeah. that's the challenge. That's so good. Those were just a couple of yeah. things that didn't make it in. Yeah. And on that note of, man, this is like something that we need to raise our kids up in. I'm even thinking like there's kind of a, there's a downer note to being a parent who's about respect. Um, like yeah. we almost kind of elevate parents in our society who are just like, you know, whatever, I'm just right. a fun mom or a fun dad, yep. you know, like I'm just, I'm just here to kind of hook and jive with the kids and mess around, you know, and I'm yeah. not really this authority figure. Um, you know, this is tangible takeaways. What are some tangible ways that even in the way that we relate to our parents, but then also in the way that we're raising kids, how can we cultivate this culture of honor with, and I think that's a tension for some people because they're like, I don't know, I don't want to be this like, hey, respect me kind of person. Right. You know, that's a really tough yep. thing for parents to toe that line with when yeah. it's not only so much easier, but it feels like the relationship flows a little bit more naturally sometimes when it's like, hey, I'm yeah. just kind of here to, right. you know. When you, everything's good. Yeah, so. Everything's okay. So what are some tangible things yeah, that I are th even you're seeing in your own life? I think, you know, one of the things that Danette and I try to do is we try to parent to the heart mm. of the issue not the action. Mm. That doesn't mean you ignore the action. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's not consequences and you're not using wisdom in what you allow your kids to continue doing, yeah. right? Because if, if you never stop them yeah. walking towards a fire, yeah. then they walk into it. Yeah. And so we would, we would say that, well, that's bad parenting to let yeah. your child walk into burning coals. Yeah. Well, okay, then apply that to social media. Mm. Apply that to what they're watching on YouTube. Mm. Apply that to who they're hanging out with. Apply that to their language. Apply that to their disrespectfulness. Mm. To you, mm. to their teachers, uh, to their friends, mm. to their brothers and sisters. Because the way you treat your family is often the way you're going to treat those outside of your home. Mm. Yeah. Now you'll manipulate it differently. Yeah. But you, you'll leverage yourself differently to yeah. gain things. But the way you treat people in the home is probably the way you're gonna treat people the rest of your life. Yeah. And so noticing that and having those conversations with them of challenging them is something that we have to go towards. Mm. Now that doesn't always need to be like, if you don't, I do this, right? Yeah. But it's honestly having those conversations of look, you know, the way you're speaking to your, your siblings mm is is degrading yeah it's demeaning yeah and it, it puts you in this trajectory towards a narcissistic worldview yeah meaning thinking that everybody is here to satisfy your desires yeah and you are not capable of doing anything wrong like that's the epitome of what i mean by narcissism yeah There's a million definitions of narcissism yeah. and it's overused but that's kind of what i have have in my research you know kind of settled on yeah it's this view that i'm not capable of doing anything wrong and everybody else yeah. is here for my benefit yeah you almost have to ask that question all the time is it everybody or is it me right right like, right and and teaching kids and challenging that is it's okay to have a conversation with them yeah and sometimes my my kids are a little like dad like it's you're, it's always a lesson yeah it's like yeah that that's my job yeah you know i'm sorry you feel that way yeah. i love you and you know i've provided you everything and more mm. and you know that yeah but my job is for the next few years because i only get you for 18 years yeah or 20 years whatever it is my job is to set you on a trajectory towards life and respect and honor of the Lord. Yeah. And if I don't, then I have failed you. Yeah. And so you have to take some seriousness. And enter into some of the discomfort. Yeah, you gotta enter into yeah. the hard things. Yeah. But you also have to enjoy and encourage the right things. Yeah. And is there an element to this of being a respectable parent? 
Absolutely. Like, right, somebody who's yeah, worthy absolutely. of honor in some right. ways too, which, you know, the command doesn't give any justification of like, parents, you should be honorable. But later right. in New Testament treatment, you know, we see absolutely. some passages you were looking at, fathers yep. don't exacerbate your children, yep. things like that, right? right? So there's an element to this of also being an honorable parent. Right, and the idea, one of the best ways to be an honorable parent is kind of like God does with us, don't expect your kids to do anything that you aren't willing to do, mm. right? Yeah. God is never calling his people to do something he's not willing to do. Yeah. Perfect in holiness, uh, dying yeah. for the sake yeah. of another. We are to die to ourselves for Christ's yeah. benefit. Christ died for us first, yeah. <laughs> for our benefit. So all of these things, and so it's with your kids. If you're frustrated with your kids' use of their cell phone, well, what is your use of your cell phone? Mm. Yeah. Check out your screen time. Yeah. Like if you're frustrated with how much yeah. they're doing, where are you at in yeah. that program? Don't um, allow yourself to be given a pass because you're the authority figure, mm. because the authority figure is responsible for acting out of the authority they've been given. Yeah. God does it perfectly. He doesn't expect us to do something he's not willing to do. Yeah. Um, and he never since. Yeah, now, it's like that PE coach that we always respected versus right. the other one, the one that would run with us where you're like, okay, yep. this is a PE coach. Yep. And then the other one who just kind of sits there. Yeah, the other one with the big whistle. Blowing the whistle, but yeah, yeah can't, exactly. Can't move You're much. like, get in here, let's run yep. together. You know, yeah. like, why am I running if you can't run? Yep. Yeah, yeah. so that, good. I think for parents, just being that, that uh, take a step back, evaluate yourself, the things that are bugging you within your children or you're seeing the dishonor, perhaps those are what you need to deal with. Them. Often, yeah, it's because they bug you about you yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's good. And seeing the Lord as that parent that you're trying to um, honor. Yeah. And then seeing it through that lens. Again, why? Because we start with humility. We yeah. start with humility and allow the Holy Spirit to work in that. And man, you'll have some good conversations with your children. That's good. As they're younger, but even as they get older. Yeah. Um, and encouraging them towards, towards right understanding, right responses, yeah. and right thinking towards the other people in their life. Yeah. Because it really has an impact on the way they approach God. And entering into the tension. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Well, this has been episode two of Tangible Takeaways. I uh, hope that you got some tangible takeaways out of it. Uh, we'll have more to come here on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. If you comment a good tangible takeaway that you had and all that good stuff, we'll see you guys next week on Tangible Takeaways.